Lord, I just thank you for this morning. I just thank you for your spirit, the Holy Ghost that's here this morning, Lord God. God, I know in a lot of churches today, he's not even welcome, but he's welcome here because he is the teacher. He's the, he's the one that directs and corrects and reproves and encourages. Father, we need the Holy Spirit here this morning, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And we're going to talk about a little bit about the resurrection this morning. And I want to bring out a point, and I was telling Bo and I this morning, was, was sharing, we was having church before church even started, praise God. <laughs> we were talking about, I was saying, Bo, you know what? In that old ceremonial temple, they had the altar. And you, you go through the, go, go get in the temple, and there was the altar, and they, they, would, they would burn the sacrifice at the altar. And, and you know what? And I started realizing something that before you can get to God, you had to accept the, the sacrifice. God had to accept the sacrifice. And because the sacrifice was so precious in those days, they'd do it often. They would, man, they'd kill thousands of animals, you know, shedding the blood of thousands of animals because it could only cover their sin. It would never take it away. But that was the avenue that God chose before Jesus came. See what I'm saying? You had to put your faith in that sacrifice. See, nothing else mattered. See, God ordered that, that for the one purpose, is that your faith had to be centered on that sacrifice. <coughs> Excuse me. And I thought about that after a while. You know, Jesus gave the ultimate sacrifice. I'm going to say some kind of bold. If you don't trust in that sacrifice, you're not going to heaven. If you don't trust in that sacrifice, you're not going to be healed or delivered. You're not going to have victory. Because of the sacrifice that Jesus made at the cross, it made us free. It gave us life. It gave us freedom from hell and the devil. Oh, the devil will fight you. He's going to try to take it out of your heart. He's going to try to fight you every day. That you do not believe in the, in the sacrifice. Oh, they're going to gonna say Jesus was just a man. Jesus died like any other thief or any other criminal. No, he was not just a man. He was the son of the living God. Come on, somebody. The Bible says he was God in the flesh. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. <clears throat> so the life that he offered at Calvary was the defeating foe of the devil. He defeated the devil. Took the keys of the power of death and hell away from the, come on somebody, away from the devil. Now you got victory. You can have life now. Because of the great sacrifice that Jesus offered. And I'm going to be, I'm going to say this and I want you to listen to me. You're not going to make it without trusting in that sacrifice. You're not going to find peace, freedom, hope, healing without trusting in that sacrifice. The offer. The offer that Jesus offered outside of Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. That God made that we don't have to go to hell. We don't have to die in our sin. Listen, don't let a preacher lie to you. Don't let a priest lie to you. Don't let a reverend lie to you. Don't let a, uh, uh, anybody lie, tell you that, well, you got to do this. You got you to add to that. I'm going to show you a scripture where Jesus said when he was on the cross, it is finished. The price is paid. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Stop trying to be more holy than you are. Stop trying to add to what God already made ready for you, provided for you. <laughs> Come on, Holy Ghost. Well, if I'm baptized in a certain way, then I'm, it's going to help Jesus save me. No. <laughs> you know, if I go to communion once a week, now listen, I'm not knocking those things. You know, but it doesn't save you. Turn with me to Isaiah 53 real quick. I'm not going to keep you too long, but I want to preach a little while, okay? And I hope you leave with something. Chapter 53. Isaiah is given a prophecy of the coming Messiah. What was the purpose of Jesus coming on the earth. What was the purpose for him to come? Was it, you see, in, a lot of, in, in, in the Jewish religion today, 
they wipe this, they don't even read this, this passage of scripture. It tells them who the Messiah is. They won't read it, but Isaiah put it in his, the Holy Ghost put it down. Because they're still waiting for him. They're still waiting for the Messiah. They're still waiting for the hope of the Messiah. See, Jesus came and he was a carpenter's son. Jesus didn't have to come and, and he wasn't the glory that they were looking for, okay? Jesus came and he lived 33 years on this earth. You know, he was from Nazareth. They had no respect for him. See, Jesus had to come out of their little crowd. You see, they were expecting Jesus to come from their religious group. But he didn't. He came from a poor house. He came from people that didn't have much. Right? Mary and Joseph. They, didn't, they weren't rich. But you see, the Pharisees and the, and the Sadducees, and Brother Michael's right, he said the Sadducees, that's why they were Sadducees. Sad. That's why they were sad, you see. <laughs> they thought he was coming out of their little group, see? Surely he come out of their little group. I mean, they, they could quote the first five books of the Bible by heart. They knew most of the prophets by heart. They can quote the, they can quote the book of Psalms. They, they, knew, they knew it. <laughs> but they didn't know God. They had religion, right? Come on, somebody. I told Bo and I said, Nicodemus was a fine man. He was a Pharisee. He could quote the five first books of the Bible by heart. And Jesus said, except a man be born again, you can't even enter the kingdom of heaven. So how can a man be born when he's old? Could he enter a second time in his mother's womb? And Jesus reproved him. He said, are you a teacher in Israel? And you don't know this? Nicodemus was lost. <laughs> he had the religious clothing. He looked righteous. He had little boxes on his head. He scriptures around his arm. He looked like he was a saved man, but he was lost. Like, come on. He didn't know God. And Jesus made it very clear you got to be born again. Before you can get into the kingdom, you got to be born again. Before you can touch God, you got to be born again. Before you can get to heaven, you got to trust in that sacrifice that God sent in His Son. But listen. Isaiah chapter 53 is one of the most profound verses of scripture and prophecy concerning Jesus. He says here, and this is Isaiah talking to the Lord. Verse 2. He says, he shall grow up before him. Or speaking about the Father. Who's him? The Father. Who's, who's he that's going to be grown up? Jesus. So he said, he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. As a root out of a dry ground. Now, I, I, I thought about that very verse when I was reading it. Let me tell you what. The church world is dry. dry. No. It, 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 the ground is cracking. I mean, people, people don't have, they're not, they're not watering their seeds. Come on, somebody. They're not taking that seed of faith. And not, I feel the Holy Ghost. And watering that seed. They're just satisfied with churchianity. They, they, try, they satisfy with just dust, <laughs> cracked ground. Come on, not, no life. As long as we can say we saved and that's all we need. No, it's much more than that. There is life in the presence of Jesus. There is growth in the presence of Christ. There is hope and joy in the presence of that tender plant. That tender plant needs water, Lawrence. Listen, listen, if your plant is dried up, put some water on it. Water the seed. You know, I, I thought about a, a blade of grass. And, I, and, 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 and you could can, you can cover a ground with cement for years. Come on. And listen, when you pull out on cement, it's bare, but let rain fall on it. That seed is still in there. <laughs> Come on, Jesus. It'll, it'll germinate even after maybe covered for 50 years. Take the semen out. That grass is going to grow. Come on, somebody. Put some water on it. Hallelujah. 
After it rains and the sun hits it, come on, Holy Ghost, and it comes down upon it, and the rain comes upon it, and the moisture starts building up, something's going to grow. My Lord, I don't know if that excites you, praise God. My God is full of moisture. My God is full of water. My God is full of life. Put some, put some sun on it, man. Put some water on it. Let it grow. He grew up. He was a tender plant growing up amongst dry ground. Hallelujah. A root out of dry ground, and, and he has no form or comeliness. In other words, there's no beauty. That, they look at Jesus. He's not like king. He, he don't look like a king. He don't look like a, a, a royalty. He's got calluses on his fingers after working, being a carpenter for all those years, banging with a hammer, sawing, and a worker, a laborer. See, a king don't have no calluses on his hand, right? But he was king. <laughs> they looked for they looked for him among their beauty. He said, among their religion. Sure, he's gonna be dressed like us. Come on, holy. <laughs> oh. Surely he's gonna he's gonna have the scriptures around his arm and boxes on his head. Surely he'll be sitting among us, the righteous. <laughs> that, there you go. <laughs> they had figured our own righteousness. And if anybody crossed their righteousness, even if it was God himself, they would not receive it. He came among his own. His own didn't receive him. Right? He came to his own. They pushed him away. There was no beauty in him. There was, no, there was nothing glorious about him they wanted. Because you know why? He wasn't like them. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. He wasn't, he wasn't a, 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 a Pharisee. That, that, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't dressed like them. And he didn't fix their hair like them. He didn't wear the same clothes they wore. Come on. It was sad, you see. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. If you're looking for, listen, he's in his glory at five state right now. There's nothing like the presence of Jesus. He's in heaven. But when he came among them, they, didn't, they, didn't, they couldn't see him. They didn't know him because he wasn't like them. So many churches today he said, well, you come join our church, you got to wear a dress, a skirt. you got to put a bun in your hair. Or you gotta, you got to dress just like us and act just like us. I'm for modest dressing. Oh, me too. Let me say, they got a lot of, a lot of people that dress that they got, got long tongues, man. They got bitter in their heart. They, they want to fight with everybody they see. Like a bunch of mad dogs, man. Yeah, right. But we got the Holy Ghost. Amen. But when we listen to that song, he says, if you don't love your neighbor, you don't love God. <laughs> come on. You can, you, you, can, you can bite and devour your neighbor all long, a week long and come to church on Sunday and, and, and act like a Christian. Praise God. No, you better find something. Something ain't right. <laughs> Something ain't clicking. Right. <laughs> something, ain't, something ain't cooking inside. <laughs> a bunch of dry ground. The Bible says in Jeremiah, tell them to break up the fallow ground. Break that old hard heart, man. Break it up. Let, let, you see, you can't put seed on a hard ground. So you're wasting it. You got to prepare the ground. Come on, Holy Ghost. Listen, you might not like this. You want to get right with God? You better plow that hard. Listen, I, I've been selling dirt for years. I know when I sell good dirt and I know when I sell bad dirt. Listen, you bring some beautiful dirt, you can pass the, the, uh, the dirt through your fingers. Man, people say, man, that's some good dirt. Go bring them a bunch of clumps. You're going to see how, <laughs> you're see how happy they are. <laughs> <laughs> man, I remember dropping some dirt, man, a big old chunk, and I looked at that man and said, oh, my God, what he's bringing me? One person didn't even want to pay for it. I don't blame him. It was slop. <laughs> Wasn't worth doing anything with. But you put that plow on it. Now you got something. Mm. I'm a old black bird. Ooh, Lord. Mm. Plow it, Lord. Plow the dirt. Plow it. Break up the fallow ground of your heart that you can receive the seed of God in your life. Let me just read this and, 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 and I'm, uh, I'm going to make you turn to John, okay? He was despised and rejected, verse 3, by men, a man of sorrows. 
See, that wouldn't go too good in the modern prosperity movie. Oh, no, you're supposed to be every day is a Friday. We suppose, listen, God's going to bless you with all the money you need. God's, you'll never be ha- unhappy. Listen, Jesus was a man of sorrow. He suffered affliction. He wept for those, those that were lost. His heart was broken, Kathy. His heart was broken. He knew what sorrow was. He was a man of sorrow. He probably weeped more than he laughed. Because if he saw the condition of his nation, he saw the condition of the Jewish people. He spent a lot of times weeping, broken, watching their rejection of him, knowing that he was the Messiah. He was the one that could bring hope to them. But they rejected him. You know what they did to him? They nailed him to an old cross. Come on. Because he didn't fit their pattern or, or, or the way they saw it. He was despised and and rejected by man, a man of sorrow, acquaintance with grief. And we hid as it was our faces from them, from him. We turn our faces. And church people are doing the same thing today, praise God. I'm going to tell you right now. We're turning our face away from the holiness of God. We're turning our face away from the power of God through Jesus Christ. We want, we want Jesus, but we want everything else with it. We don't want to separate ourselves from this world. Might I'll preach, praise God. Come out from among them, the Bible says. Be ye separated, saith the Lord. Then I'll be your God, and you shall be my people. Come out from the monks of sinners, and come out from the monks of the sinful ways, and the people that are drawing you away from the Lord. Now, they got people that are hurting. They're trying to be overcome, you know. Pray with these people, but for those that don't want, for those that want to live in sin and think they can have Christ and have sin too, you got another thing coming. It's not going to happen. You got, to, you, got to, you got to let the Holy Ghost change you. You got to let Jesus change you. And he says here, he was despised and we did not esteem him. How do you know most of the world right now is despising Jesus? Oh, you can talk about God, but don't mention Jesus. You can talk about every other God, Allah, you can talk about Buddha, but you talk about Jesus. The hairs come up. You ever saw a rooster, fighting rooster, when they get ready to tangle? <laughs> That's what it's like. Jesus. Come on. I mean, that's not just Jesus. I want to shock you and for those that are listening on the internet. Yes, there is. <laughs> Jesus is the only way. It ain't in Buddha. It ain't in Muhammad. It ain't in Mary. It ain't in Joseph. It ain't, it ain't in apostles. It ain't, it ain't in Saint this and Saint that one. It's in Jesus. That's what the Bible teaches. I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes to the Father but by me. You can't get to heaven without Jesus. Well, I'm going to go to his mother. No, his mother was a godly woman. I'm not knocking his mother. I think she was one of the greatest women in the Bible, but she never said to pray to her. Not one time. I've read this Bible a couple of times. She she did give one commandment in the Bible. She said, do what he says. (laughs) That's the only commandment Mary ever gave in the Bible. Do what Jesus says. Okay, well, we're going to obey Mary. Let's see what Jesus says. (laughs) But that's the, what they don't want. They don't want to see what Jesus says. They don't want to know what Jesus has to say. He was despised, rejected by a man. A man, a man of sorrow. It says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Thank God for that, right? Yet we, we, we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, our sins. My Lord, come on, Holy Ghost. He was wounded for our transgressions. I said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon him. You want peace? He bore, the, he bore it on the cross for you. You want peace? Go to Jesus. Because the price has been paid already for your peace. My Lord, I'll preach, brother. Listen, you want joy? Go to the cross. Go to Jesus. You want, you, want, you want victory in your life? You want healing in your body? Go to Jesus. Come on. My God. Listen, did he say go to somebody else? No, he said go to Jesus. He's the one that bored it on his body. <laughs> he said it a while ago. We talked. He's the one that took it upon himself. My peace is in Christ. And by his stripes, Brother Allen, you're healed. <laughs> Come on, brother. Brother Allen, tell him how you, he, had, he had to go get a, a, an operation. 
And we prayed for him, uh, which Sunday, brother? He went to the doctor and they didn't have to operate on him. <laughs> By his stripes. Be honest, but I never thought about it. I prayed, we prayed when you just left. <laughs> right. By his stripes, your healing is paid for. You stop and listen. I don't know about you getting this. Register that right now. Everything that you need is in the foot of Jesus. Everything you need is at the cross of Christ. How did I get that, Brother Lenny? It's put your faith in the sacrifice. Oh, Lord. Put your faith in what he done. Come on. I feel the Holy Ghost. In. You looking for the peace of God? Put it in the cross. Put it in the sacrifice. Come on. Come on. Not that wooden beam, praise God. I'm talking about the price that was paid. You want hope? Put it in. You want faith? Put it there. You want healing? Put it there. Praise God. Everything, everything you need, I just read it to you. It's already been paid for. It's not, not, it's not in your power or in your willpower. It's in Jesus. I'm telling you, Yvette, just surrender. Just put your, put your hands down and say, God, it's in your power. It's in your son. Man, listen, that takes a lot of pressure off you because you're busy trying to be holy. And all you got to do is trust in what he already done. Hallelujah. You know, you're struggling trying to say, well, how can I do this? How can I make this happen? And I can just trust in what he done. I can show you if you do that, everything's going to fall in place. The victory will come. Praise God. The healing will come. The salvation will come. The peace will come because it was paid for. That's my resurrection message this morning. You have to put it in him. Bro, I feel that. Praise God. Man, I feel that so much up here. I don't know if you're grabbing a hold of what I'm telling you. If you want the life to happen in you, if you want your faith to grow, if you want your peace to come, put it in him, praise God. He is the answer. We're going to worship him. Not me, not the church, not people, but him, praise God. He's the worshiper. He's to be worshiped. He's to be adored. He's to be praised. Oh, Lord, praise God. I'm getting excited of you, Kat. Hallelujah. I'm getting excited because I'm, I'm feeling the peace of God. Come on. I'm feeling, the, I'm feeling that peace that he bore, that he paid for, that cross. Hallelujah. Woo, I feel that, man. Man, I feel like I take the devil on. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm excited. Oh, man, I'm excited. Praise God. He was oppressed in verse 7. He was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Listen, he sat before Pilate, praise God, and listen, didn't say very much. Hallelujah, he knew what was coming. He knew where the victory lied. He knew what he had to do. He didn't, want to, he didn't have to spend time talk, arguing with, with the Pharisees and arguing with Pilate. Pilate said, I can go, I got power to, 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 to release you or to crucify you. You have no power over me. <laughs> Unless it was given to you from the Father in heaven, praise God. You have no power over me. <laughs> He shocked it. This is a professional executor, man. This is a professional judge in Rome. He knew how. He said, I don't find no fault in him. I don't find nothing wrong with him. <laughs> oh, boy. But we come up shorter, bro. Oh, we, I, I, feel like I, I feel like I don't know nothing up here, praise God. <laughs> the Holy Ghost is the speaker. The Holy Ghost is, listen, you had, nobody has any power over him unless he was given from the Father. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen, I want you to turn with John 19 real quick. And I want you to go leave this church today knowing that he has made the, he has made the price paid for you. He has paid the ultimate price. Oh, hallelujah. I want to start in verse 28 of chapter 19. We are, Jesus is being crucified. He's been nailed to the cross here. Okay? I can't get into all the story. But he was nailed to the cross. You know, I, I thought about this a lot. You see, just a few days before, they were heralding him as the king. You remember that? He was coming on a donkey. He, the, the nation is, thou, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that. And they were praising him. And man, he said, he is, he, blessed is the king of David, the son of David. They were they, 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 they saying, he's the, this is the Messiah. But after a while, the closer he got to the cross, the less he had followed him. Notice that. They were the same ones as was heralding him as a king, was the same ones saying crucify him. Just a few days later. Well, you wonder why. Did they, did they get the message? <laughs> when they were praising him, the Pharisees got up. You're telling people to shut their mouths. 
He said, if, this, if, if they are quiet, the very stones will cry out. Right? The crocs will cry out if they, they hold their peace. But it troubled me because in a three-day span about, the same ones that was heralding him as Hosanna and the highest was the same ones that didn't crucify him. See, Jesus wasn't what they expected. See, they, they thought he was coming in and he was going to overthrow Rome, you see. That's the Messiah they wanted. And then they, they would rule and reign with, the, with him. That's what they thought was going to happen. Of course, that's going to happen. He's going to be king of all the earth. He's going to be ruling the earth one day. But he was coming to pay for the sins of man, Lawrence. He, the, the, debt, the sin debt wasn't, had, wasn't paid yet. So Jesus had to come and die on the cross so we could be set free from sin and hell. See, that's not the Jesus they wanted. You remember Peter? Peter was asked by Jesus, well, all the disciples. Jesus asked all the disciples, who do men say that I am? Some said, well, you're Elijah, you're Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But he said, who do you say? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah. He said, it's flesh and blood have not revealed that to you, Peter, but my Father in heaven. A few verses over, Jesus is telling him he had to go to the cross. Peter said, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> Remember that? Listen, he said, told the same man, he just said, you're the Messiah. The same man, he said, get behind me, Satan. Because you don't care about the things of God, but a man. See, Peter wanted Jesus, but he didn't want a cross. Come on, somebody. He wanted Jesus, but he didn't want the sacrifice. See, he didn't want Jesus to go to the cross. He didn't mind Jesus ruling and reigning and taking over the, the governments of the world then, because he figured he would be with him. But when he got to the, to the situation of him dying, he, he told Jesus, no, you know, that's not going to happen to you. He said, said, get behind me, Jesus told Satan. That's told Peter. He just said that he was a rock and turned around and called him Satan. <laughs> they talk about Peter being a rock. They talk about his faith and the, and, and the Messiah was the rock. Now, I'm going to show you something, praise God. I'm going to read this and just listen for a minute, okay? Jesus is on the cross. They, cruci they, they nailed him up there already. And, I, I, and listen, I, I, Bill Allen, I'm going to tell you, brother, I, I started seeing this, just how much he suffered. I said it last week, I'm going to say, you see, they had, they had already put him to a, a whipping post. They had ripped the back of his flesh off. And with cattails with some little hooks that were on the end of a rope. And when they would whip him, He'd pull all the skin off, scraping his back wide open. And listen, the Jews would do it 39 times, but it wasn't the Jews whipping him. It was the Romans. So it probably was more than 39 times. And they ripped his flesh, his skin right off of his back. Then they put an old cross on him, an old beam, where that, that beam was rubbing on his open wound. Oh, man, I, I said to myself, I could feel that. I told that to a man one day. He said, man, his eyes got that big. I said, you never saw it that way, did you? Just how much he suffered. And he carried it. It got to the point he couldn't carry it no more. They asked a man. They caught him, took a man out of the out of crowd and made him carry it to the cross because it was, it was just too much agony. And they turned around and nailed him to an old beam. And it wasn't little nails like we see. This was spikes. They, would just, they took that and with no mercy, they would nail it in his wrist. And they hung him up on an old cross. Now watch. The thing about that, every, all of the weight of his body was, it was just hanging him. It was, was going forward. He couldn't breathe. It, 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 all the blood, his vessels in his nerves and his chest would have been all busted. And he's up there. I don't, listen, it's only the grace of God. He, listen, he had to die at the right time. Come on, somebody. See, Satan was trying to kill him before he got to the cross. Yeah. See, because if he'd have done that, he, he'd have defeated the Lord. And all of that weight, and it, it was on a, a, that little stand, I don't know what you call it. And he was, he, all of, he was just like this. Just, just, just hanging. And I thought about already, Lawrence, the suffering, the agony that he took on his body. 
nailed to the, and then all of the, he's, 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 he's gasping for air because he can't breathe. And the thorns on his head, they had pierced the nerves in his scalp, in his head, and pushing that, they pressed it, then he just barely, he shoved it on there, man. You ever stuck yourself with a thorn? Just imagine hundreds of them on that, on, on that cross. Just, and I thought about that, I said, man, Huh. And you know, he, he, he never quit. <laughs> if he had gave up, you wouldn't be here today. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. If he had quit, Satan could have destroyed mankind right there. Because that was the only last hope man had was the cross. The last hope that man had was him dying. Man, I feel that, praise God. Dying on that, that old beam. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scriptures might be free, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled the sponge with wine and put it on a hyssop or stick and put it in his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. My God. You know, that's the most important, most significant time in history is what I just read to you. God, I paid the price. It's paid, Lawrence. <laughs> Come on. I don't know if y'all feel that, man. It's paid. Men's salvation is paid for. It's paid for. He said, it is finished. The death is paid, Lord. Don't, there's nothing else that has to be done. It's finished. The Bible says he bowed his head down and he gave up the ghost. Gave up the ghost. My Lord, I don't know if you feel that, praise God. Out of all history, this is the most important, most significant, most Important time in history is this one little incident when Jesus said it's finished. Now men can get to God, Brother Bull. <laughs> My Lord, I don't know if you feel that. Men can come to the throne now. Where well, there was a veil at one time, you couldn't reach him. We don't need a priest. We don't need a preacher. We don't need it. We, the, the, the Bible says that the curtain was torn from top to bottom. The, 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 the part that separated men and God was torn apart. Now you can go to the Father yourself because Jesus paid the price. Amen. I want to sing a song I wrote years ago. And listen, I don't like to sing too much of my song because I don't want to puff myself up because it's not about me. Jesus paid a debt he did not owe. <laughs> Seriously. He was nailed in your place paying your debt. <laughs> He was dying for your sins. It makes me mad when I can see people say, Oh, Jesus died now. He paid. We can sin all we want. No, you cannot sin all you want. Every time you think about sinning, think about that story I just told you, which is true. The great price that my Lord has suffered for our sins. He paid it all. Listen to me. Are y'all hearing me this morning? I said he paid it all. He didn't halfway pay it. When preachers say, yeah, you know, you can believe in Jesus, but you got to be water baptized a certain way. You got to do this and do that. No. You're saved when you confess your sins before the Lord and give your life to him. You're born again. Your life, Jesus comes to live in your heart. That's when you're saved. You don't have to spend all day in a confession box. You don't have to go shake a preacher's hand. It's paid for. Rejoice in it. He said it's finished. When he meant it's finished, it's, it's it. That's it. There's nothing else that needs to be done to earn, to pay for your salvation. It's paid for. I want to share this song with you. I wrote this years ago, and I was just came to me yesterday when I, when I was thinking about the resurrection. You can start it, Lloyd. I want you to stand up a minute if you can, please. If you can't, understand. 
I want you to think about the price that Jesus paid. Amen. Put this one on. Hallelujah. God is good. Yes, Lord. We serve a good God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord Jesus. My God. I owe a debt I could not pay Took the perfect Lamb of God To wash my sins away To leave heaven To leave that glorious place to live in his sinful world to die one day he paid it all he paid it all for me that lonesome walk to the hill of Calvary they drove nails in his feet and hands. Yes, Lord. He paid it all. Paid it all for me. We serve a good God. Praise Jesus. <laughs> Worship the Lamb. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a good God, amen. He was the perfect Lamb of God. The great sacrifice. They drove nails in His hands and feet. They placed thorns upon His brow. He cried to the Father, it's finished. He said, now it's done. He paid it all for me. He paid it all. He paid it all for me. That lonesome walk to the hill of Calvary they drove nails in his feet and hands he paid it all paid it all for me the death has been paid praise God he paid it all Paid it all for me. Do you love the Lord this morning? Can you see it this morning? He paid it all. The price has been paid. The debt is settled. <laughs> Come on, Holy Ghost. The debt has been settled. The sin death is paid. Rejoice in the Lord. I said, rejoice in the Lord. I said, rejoice in the Lord. I got one more. Pray for number five on there, Lord. He's given us victory. I said, He's given us victory. He's given us a weapon we can use, right? We call it the Word of God, the sword. This is the thing that God has given us to, to fight this, this enemy. I'm almost finished. It's only, it's only 11.30. You'll be out of here before. <laughs> he paid it all, praise God. And he's given us a vow. Lord gave me this song years ago, boy. I love it, praise God. He's given me victory, brother. He's given me a weapon. I can fight back the devil, right? 
Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you give us to me a sword to fight so I can use with all my might. I'm on the battle line with Jesus with this sword you gave me <laughs> gave me to fight I'm on the battle line with Jesus yeah I've been wounded and afflicted come on Holy Ghost yes I couldn't win this war if it wasn't for that sword come on Jesus let's praise him praise God what a good God we serve huh come on somebody what a good God we serve Lord, you gave me a sword to fight so I can use with all my might on the battle line with Jesus. I'm on the battle line with Jesus, yeah, oh, it's a good God, amen. I've been wounded and afflicted. I couldn't do in this war if it wasn't for that soul. You gave me gave me the fight well that old sword you gave me to fight let's give Jesus a praise offering amen amen I want to challenge you today to remember Jesus to remember his sacrifice at Calvary 2,000 years ago because that's all that matters <laughs> Man, I hope you got that today. That's all that matters is what he did 2,000 years ago. The death has been paid. The price has been paid. Everything is settled. Lord, we thank you for this morning. Lord, as we end this service, I thank you for my brothers and sisters that are here this morning. I ask you right now to, to give them the vision of your, of, your, of your great sacrifice. Let them see your great sacrifice. Let them find rest and peace in your sacrifice, Father. And no, one, one more thing. you got to have faith in that sacrifice. Place it completely in Jesus. Trust Him. 